Today we're going to build this shaver stand bathroom organizer caddy thing on four eyes. All right, so all you really need to build this thing is a table saw, a smaller one will do, a drill, a sander, and a handsaw or jigsaw. Not counting clamps, sandpaper, tape measures, etc., 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 dot, dot, dot. But one thing that's key if you want to do that is starting out with wood that's the correct thickness, or about a quarter of an inch thick. I unfortunately didn't do that, which meant that I had to resaw and mill a three quarter inch thick board into two quarter inch boards, and in doing that, use an extra couple thousand dollars worth of equipment. But either way, we're both at the same point now with our quarter inch thick material, so let's get cutting. I started off over at the table saw where I broke things down into rough pieces. In this shot, you can see the wood that I'm using was still pretty bowed, but I decided to roll with it. By the time it gets cut into smaller pieces, a lot of that bow will go away, and honestly, it'll work either way in this instance. Here, these are all gonna be a bit oversized at this point, and they'll be brought down to their finished size when we do the bevel cuts a little bit later. Anyhow, I know it's hard to tell the exact size of everything I'm cutting out, so here's a quick drawing that shows all the pieces and their final dimensions. Next, still at the table saw, I cut all of my pieces to length by using a cross-cut sled. Now here, these actually are going to be the final dimensions. So I marked it up on one piece, set up a stop block, and then I could repeat that same length cut on all of the pieces. After I'd finished with that, and still over at the table saw, I tilted my blade to 37 and a half degrees. I know that the gauge here says 52 and a half, but trust me that on the table saw scale it would say 37 and a half right now. And then I made marks on all of my pieces to help me keep track of what pieces will be cut with what angle. So just to be clear, what I'm drawing here is going to tell me if the angle is steeper or shallow cut, and which direction it should be going. But this isn't a line that I'm going to cut to. And actually, let me explain how this whole thing's gonna work. So as you can see, the front leans back at a 15 degree angle. The reason for that is it'll make it a lot more convenient to rest your phone on. So basically what we have is an acute 75 degree angle here and an obtuse 105 degree angle here. You remember we had just set our blade to 37 and a half degrees in the last shot. And the reason for that is that 37 and a half is half of 75. And you'll also remember that my gauge said 52 and a half. That's because it's measuring it from a starting point of 90 degrees. But anyway, like you might have guessed, 52 and a half is half of our obtuse angle of 105 degrees. What this means is that we only set our blade once, lock it down, and this will enable us to make every angle that we need. We'll just need to cut two of the pieces horizontally and two of the pieces vertically. But this drawing might actually explain it better if we separate it into pieces. So if you imagine that this line, which is drawn at 37 and a half degrees is the blade, you can see how the angles that we need to cut match up to it. This one we'll need to cut vertically, while this one we can cut horizontally. So hopefully all of that makes sense, but if not, I actually have a whole video that talks about just this, so I'll link it below. Next, I started marking out some slots on the top panel for where I'd be able to rest my razor and my shaving brush. Now, I know not everybody uses one, but you could certainly make this slot for something else, a toothbrush or what have you. But the point is, you're best off to make this an appropriate size for whatever you plan on holding, rather than basing it off of what I'm making. But if you wanna know what mine are just for some reference, they're one inch wide and three eighths of an inch wide. I chose those because they worked, and I had a Forstner bit and a drill that were those sizes. So next over at the drill press, I used them to cut out a few holes that were close to the center of the board and that would become the ends of the slots. And then over at the bandsaw, I cleared out the rest of the material. And here if you don't have a bandsaw, you could certainly use a handsaw or jigsaw to get the job done. Okay, let's cut back to a drawing so I can explain this next part. So imagine that this is me. Actually, that's not right. There. Now you might be thinking, why does this guy need a shaver stand? He doesn't even shave, right? Wrong. I do shave. About once every three days, in fact. Not only my neck, but above my beard as well. 
and another place that this drawing doesn't capture. No, not there. The back of my neck. Perv. Anywho, and that's why I'd like to thank Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. I've been using Dollar Shave Club's razors and grooming products for a couple months now, and it's awesome. Everything is super high quality and a pleasure to use, but my absolute favorite aspect is the convenience of having it all delivered to my door. The first set of products that I got was their Daily Essential Starter Set, which right now they're basically giving away for only five bucks. In it, you're gonna get their shave butter, body wash, one wipe Charlie's butt wipes, which I know sounds funny, but I assure you are effective. In fact, some would say they're the number one way to clean up after a number two. And an executive razor with a full set of replacement cartridges. And after that, you'll receive replacement cartridges each month for only a few bucks. So this $5 offer is available for you to try right now at dollarshaveclub.com slash four eyes. Again, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash four eyes. I'll put a link down in the description. So check them out and think of me whenever you shave or shower. And most importantly, whenever you wipe your butt. All right, thanks Dollar Shave Club. While that was drying, I used one of the remaining panels to make my back piece. This was just a straight rip to cut it down to the appropriate width. And I just nibbled away at it a few times until it fit just right. Then before gluing it in, I used a chisel to remove some of the squeeze out from the inside of the stand. And after a little cleanup and sanding, I could install the back. The last piece of the stand to make was this little ledge for resting stuff, or in my case, a cell phone on. It would probably work with just one quarter inch strip, but my phone in its case is a little bit thicker, so I decided to cut a strip into two pieces and laminate them together so there's a little bit more wiggle room. Once that was dry, I just took a pass on each end on the table saw to clean things up. Now, you could tilt the blade to 15 degrees and make a rip cut and then glue it on accurately and get the finished shape that you're going for, but I found it easier to just leave it rectangular, glue it on, and then sand it flush after it dried. Basically, you'll be left with a little overhang like this, but any sander, even a random orbit sander, can knock that back pretty quickly. Part of being a man is learning to take responsibility for your successes and your failures. You can't go blaming others or being jealous. Seeing somebody else's success as your failure is a cancerous way to live. You know who said that? Kevin Bacon. I found it while I was trying to think of an ending for this video and looking up quotes about being a man. And all joking aside, I think what Mr. Bacon said is actually pretty true. But. Even more so than that, when I think about what it really means to be a man, it's shaving. Thanks for watching, and if this is your first time to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.